Marcus Conti reporting. In our country, we want to uh, send our kids to college to get a good education. Right? We, we, we value a college education as something valuable and something sought after. Right? That, uh, that though thy who, th- those who go on to college know more about the world than the rest of us. They become scholars. They become educated in something, educated in facts, educated in the ways of human beings. Right? And one of those people, one of the highest scholars in, in, the, uh, in the game right now is Rachel Maddow. Now, Rachel Maddow of MSNBC fame is taking a lot of shit right now for Russiagate, right, for, for being the sole or one of the primary propagators of Russiagate, the story of uh, the belief, the, the conspiracy theory that Donald Trump is a Russian spy and was only elected because the Russians under the direct the directive of the president of Russia Putin was was uh that's the only way he was elected as president of the United States because Putin made it happen by hacking the by hacking the election in the United States by rigging machines and and uh, and hacking into the DNC and revealing all the the dirty little secrets within the DNC to the American people and the world, right? That's the conspiracy theory. Right? Now, there's elements of truth in that uh, colossal lie. The the fact that someone had dumped the secret, the secretive, or the uh, insider communications of the DNC had dumped that on the public. I believe it should have been public anyway, but it was dumped on the public and everybody got to see the corruption inside the DNC. That is truth, and that did have swing in the election. But the rest of it is false. What I want to talk about is Rachel Maddow. And where does it come from? How does someone fall so hook, line, and sinker for a lie like Russiagate when someone like, I don't know, someone like myself operating out of his mother's basement or walking around the park with a joystick or... Or, you know, a hundred other YouTube commentators that saw it very clearly what had happened. That the DNC was rigging an election against Bernie Sanders. And when they were caught, they they then transferred that guilt, that um, that, uh, caughtness onto the Russians, right? And then ultimately put Trump behind that as well and said, well, Trump directed the Russians, was working with the Russians without any evidence. Now, I'm not going to say there's no evidence 75 times in this video, but there is no evidence. So I'll say it one big time, that there is no evidence that the Russians hacked the, hacked the DNC. There's no evidence that Russia was working with Trump. There's no evidence that Russia hacked any machines. But Rachel Maddow, let's look at some of... Uh, some of this is uh, Glenn Greenwald found this on Al Jazeera uh, with Rachel Maddow. But just listen to some of the big lies, and I want to I want to make a point how Rachel Maddow is not entirely guilty of of this crime. Rachel Maddow lives in a bubble. Rachel Maddow is a is a New York City you know Upper West Side hack. She lives in a in a luxurious condo in the sky and up on the Upper West Side. She gets in her private taxi that drives her down to, you know, wherever the hell they're filming this crap on a daily basis. And um, they pay her $6 million, $7 million, $10 million a year to spoo this nonsense. Her world stopped in 2008 when Obama won and the Democrats seized power, right? And she became the darling of the left. She became the talking head of the left. Where Sean Hannity was for, um, for Bush, and you know guys like Rush Limbaugh were for Bush. Rachel Maddow was exalted to the to the uh, to the lead of the 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 talk. She was the lead talking head for the left, and and in that her her world stopped, her ability to critically think stopped. She believes that the she believes in the Washington Post and the, and the. New York Times, in the, in the height of oligarchy, in the rise of oligarchy out of 2008, the severe rise, now the austerity and monopolization of corporations, 
She can't see it because she's inside of it and unwilling to see it, right? While she's sitting in her hot tub on the roof in a, you know, in Manhattan somewhere with bubbles flying and, and drinking drinks and, and, and two and a half million people telling her how, how much they love her. Again, it's, it's, it's a harvesting of, of Trump hate, like Trump withdrawal, Trump sickness, because they lost. And there was this 4 million people, 5 million, 10 million people in America hanging on to this idea. And she was selling into that, into that audience, no doubt. But did she do it intentionally? That's what I want to. That's what I want to talk about. Watch this. Network anchor invested more airtime, more of her own credibility on the case for collusion than MSNBC's Rachel Maddow. Because if the worst is true, if the the presidency is effectively a Russian op, if you had to pick one person uh, who promoted the hysteria, then. Uh, she would be that person. Her ratings were going down until Trump was elected and until Russiagate became a possibility. And she seized on it immediately, well before Trump's inauguration. We're about to find out if the new president of our country is going to do what Russia wants. With this story, she started playing a character where she sort of became this patriotic uh, sort of front actor. There have been tons of Russians! There was a very powerful element of fear that ran through her shows. I mean, the, the, the most infamous broadcast was the one during a cold front earlier this year. Russia can just shut off the electricity. They have that ability now. Where she suggested that the Russians had the capability to turn off the heat across the United States at any moment. What would happen if Russia killed the power in Fargo today? You know, that would be an act of war. There was this implied subtext that the Russians were this sort of reasonless evil that uh, was everywhere, and we had to have vigilance. Uh, so that's that, that, there's two tiers of ignorance I want to talk about. When you, when you watch something like that, two tiers of ignorance. Right? One is the obvious ignorance of Rachel Maddow that believes... She, she believes that lie, right? And she's, because of the bubble that I told you that she lives in, you can see her holding on to that, that belief that, the, that promoting a conspiracy theory that the president of the United States is a Russian op, right? And you can, you can you, and Rachel Maddow, really, I mean, let's, let's be honest. When you watch her, she's very articulate. She's very, she's, she has a very sharp mental facility. She's very able to retain facts and but on a bigger picture when you go one step further up you can see that she lives she's she's trapped in a box right she's a caged she's a beautiful little bird in a cage that's owned right she allowed herself to fly into that cage and they they shut the door and they just bring her out right and she doesn't you know here's the Rachel Maddow show and they and they present that that caged bird and it's not i mean it's not necessarily a cage the cage is a six million dollar condo on the upper west side living in the sky you know sipping sipping expensive drinks right and so that's that's one tier of ignorance where it's it's and it's always oligarchy it's always monopoly it's the people calling the shots that have placed her in the cage now the other part of it is the other part of it is guys like matt uh tabbitt this guy right here right the guy from the Rolling Stone, right? There's that other level of narrative spin where they believe uh, places like Politico and BuzzFeed and everybody now believe are attacking Rachel Maddow to say that Rachel Maddow did it for her own gain. She saw the opportunity to spin the story and and put herself in the center of that fire. And be, right, that's not true. Right? That's it's only partially true that she's doing it. She is doing it for to grasp the attention of the American people. Those four million Trump sick people that just want to hate this guy. Right. That's true. But what's not true is that is that she, that there's not a what what Matt Talbot and these guys don't see is that there's a higher, they, they fail to call out the higher entity, which is essentially the, the intelligence agencies that feed someone like Rachel Maddow her information. So Rachel Maddow is at the top of the game. So the CIA, the, 
you know, all of the intelligence agencies give her direct, direct, she has a direct line to the, to the intelligence communities. And she feels good about that. She feels like she's getting the right stuff. But what she doesn't realize is that she's the bird in the cage. And they say, they sit around in the think tank and say, okay, well, let's give this story to Rachel Maddow and she'll go out and promote it. And she could never be, she could never be held uh, accountable for lying or making up stories because she's telling, she's, she's parroting the intelligence community, right? She's parroting what the, what, what the intelligence community is feeding her, right? Now, the, the, the real justice would be Rachel Maddow to then call out, soon to call out the uh, intelligence communities and say, hey, look, I was just following what the intelligence communities were telling me. That's all I did, right? And am I wrong to do that? No. But you, you have to, but, but why is it that everybody else can see that the intelligence communities are lying except you? Why can't you see it? That's the problem. So let's watch, um, this is, let's roll the tape back to 2017. This is pretty good too. Watch this. There were hints in the months before the November election that. So this is six months after July, 2017, almost two years old now. It's like, wow, two years have passed, right? This is when the Russiagate narrative was really starting to pick up. And uh, listen, just listen to what, how she spins it. Something was off, that something was going on in this one um, that was different. It, it all seemed, though, almost too big to grasp at the time, in the middle of what was already this incredibly interesting campaign, this incredibly politically vio, uh, volatile campaign. But in the middle of, of all that, there was also this external foreign dynamic at work. Beginning with the news last summer that the email servers of the Democratic Party headquarters had been hacked by... Russian hackers. See, now she's leaning, she's leaning on her own news. Look at the, look at the headline. And NBC, her organization released this news. Right? So she's, as the good little troll, the little bird in the cage, she's, she's regurgitating what her own organization, without challenging it, without one shred of investigation into it, she buys it completely because that's what a scholar does. A scholar and a, a good little Samaritan, a good little worker doesn't challenge authority. She don't, they don't do that, right? She's just following along. Tragedy. And there was the news that voter registration systems in at least two states or maybe 10. Look at the headlines. NBC, CBS, and Politico all saying that more than 20 states have faced major election hacking attempts. More state election databases hacked than previously thought. Russians hacked two U.S. voter databases. Again, there's no evidence at all. There is evidence that those machines were hacked because the machines are owned by privately held corporations that hacked the, the machines. That's what the DNC does. Again, election, elections are rigged, right? The, the, the election, the, the uh, exit pollings are off by more than, I don't know, in some states, 12, 15 percent. Right where two percent is a uh, is an indication of election fraud, right? But there's no evidence that any anybody Russia could shut off the heat if they want, right? So that so now Russia is hacking the election. Ten states or maybe twenty states um, had been probed or breached to to some level by again. Hack Department of Homeland Security says right? very important. She's leaning on information that's fed to. These, these trolls that have an interest in keeping the lie alive, right? Because they're, they're also following marching orders. Marching orders, that's what it is, right? But there's no evidence that was ever seen by anybody. You know, all the evidence points to a leak inside the DNC from a couple of brave souls that wanted to reveal the, the factual truth about how the DNC was ripping off Bernie Sanders. That's all it was. Curse. By October, the month before the election, the United States intelligence agencies had come out and said that while they couldn't agree on whether it was definitely the Russians behind those voter registration system hacks, they said they were confident that the Russians, the Russian government, had definitely directed the hacking of the DNC and other American political organizations. And or see, see how she said the Russians definitely directed. See how she added her directed? 
the Russian government uh, uh, definitely directed. But it doesn't say that the Russian government hacked anything. It says that that at some point they're in, in implying that there was no Russian hack, that someone directed someone else to hack <laughs> with no evidence. Right? And she believes it. Because why? Because, because the U.S. intelligence community said so. And there's the, there lies the flaw. There lies the, the biggest problem with Rachel Maddow, that she leans on the intelligence communities that we all know to be, to be propaganda. Right? But how come she doesn't know it? How come, how come, you know, again, Marcus Conti sitting in his, you know, in his basement in, in, in Brooklyn, his mother's basement in Brooklyn, knew that the DNC was not hacked Rather, it was a leak from the inside. How did how did I know that that um, that uh, President Trump had absolutely no inside collusion efforts with the Russian government? How did I know that? Right? And how how do I know it? And all of these Russian all of these these agencies uh, are saying the opposite. And a person like Rachel Maddow believes them. How is that possible? It's because the the agencies are lying. The agencies are promoting propaganda. And Rachel Maddow, the good road scholar, the bird in the cage, can't see it or won't see it. In order to, quote, interfere with the U.S. election process. So the, the bizarre story, out of all the weird stuff that has ever happened in American elections, this story, our story, our generation's story of the bizarre Russian hacking of our election, that story was at least starting to emerge in the weeks before the election. It's so profound to her because she was totally sleeping when Bernie Sanders was getting a hatchet job. When Bernie Sanders was filling up stadiums of people, you know, voters, and Hillary Clinton couldn't get 10 people in a, you know, in a school auditorium, right? She was, she was ignoring that fact, promoting the narrative that, that Hillary Clinton was couldn't be beat because of the the rigging of the election. So she bought into the lie while ignoring the people's pick, which was Bernie Sanders. And now it's so profound to her, she can't believe it. She's like, how did I miss that? Because you were sleeping through the, the most important part of the primary. The real story was that the Democrats hacked an election. It still is the number one story. The number one story is that, is that the Democrats rigged the 2016 primary against a favorite, Bernie Sanders, handed it to Hillary Clinton, who the most corrupt politician in America, who went on to lose to a talk show host. That's the story. But Rachel Maddow, the, 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 the injection of Russia into the middle of it is just like, I can't believe it. Where did Russia, how did it happen? How did I, what happened? Ooh, ah, ah, ah. But at the same time, you know, as usual, as normal, there was this super contentious, fascinating presidential campaign going on. And that was very engrossing at the time. And it was not until after the election that the extent of the Russian involvement in our presidential election really came to light. It only came to light, Rachel, because, because the propaganda machine then upped the ante when they realized that the truth was about to come out with WikiLeaks. Right? You had Julian Assange telling, telling you all along what happened that it was likely that they killed the kid who leaked it, Seth Rich. It's very, very likely. But we'll never know that because the FBI scrubbed that record too. Everything, all of the evidence gets scrubbed. All of the legitimate evidence gets scrubbed. And all we get is propaganda. That's all we get is bullshit. And that started with a startling report from the Washington Post that came out the evening of Friday, December 9th. A report that kind of blew all other news right out of the water. So we had a whole show planned tonight uh, that had honestly nothing to do with this topic, but then uh, the Washington Post just dropped this astonishing bombshell uh, within the last hour. Now, I'm gonna, if you haven't seen this yet, I'm gonna put the headline up on the screen here so you can see it. I'm just gonna quote the lead directly here. Uh, the CIA has concluded in a secret assessment that Russia intervened in the 2016 election to help Donald Trump win the presidency, rather than just to undermine confidence in the U.S. electoral system. Uh, they're citing officials briefed on the matter. Quote, intelligence... So, a secret assessment Rachel Maddow is believing a secret CIA assessment of the facts, right? 
without, I mean, so you have to just say, okay, it's secret and it's the CIA, so I believe it, right? It's, it's, it's profound. Intelligence agencies have identified individuals with connections to Russian government who provided WikiLeaks with thousands of hacked emails from the Democratic National Committee and others. It's just such a, it's, it is, again, we've never seen any evidence of it. The Mueller report will come out in, in, in the middle of this month, April, or maybe May, whatever it comes out. But this is the facts that we have to look at. Because, again, there's no Trump anything going on here at all. And there's also no Russia anything going on here at all. Who really did it? Who really did it? What companies came in and, 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 and hacked into these machines? That's what we have to find out, right? And you'll find out that it was, it was rigged. The rigging was for, for, for Hillary Clinton. It was in favor of Hillary Clinton. Agencies have identified individuals with connections to the Russian government who provided WikiLeaks with thousands of hacked emails from the DNC and others, including Hillary Clinton's campaign chairman. This is stunning stuff. Right? Stunning. I mean, this is, and this is just broken within the last hour in the Washington Post. They're reporting that the CIA not only concluded that the Russians intervened in the election, stole information, publicized stolen information to help Donald Trump win the presidency. But the CIA gave its information about Russia to the leadership in the House and the Senate. And the White House wanted to make a big public bipartisan stand against it. And uh, Republicans said no. Mitch McConnell specifically said no. So what this, what this really says is it's a, it's a, it's a, um, it's the CIA that is is deeply corrupted now, and we know who the CIA is. Look, you have you have Mike Pompeo right now sitting next to Trump, driving the propaganda of Venezuela, saying that's a humanitarian crisis. There is none. They're saying that you know Syria, all these crises, right? You have John Brennan, who was grilled by Trey Gowdy, and Brennan said in open court, "Is that we don't do evidence." We don't do evidence. Evidence? What do you want? You want evidence? What the fuck? Evidence? No. We don't do evidence. We do spycraft. We do, we make up bullshit stories and then we weave those stories and then we, we promote those stories down our channels, down our, our, um, our corporately owned entities like Rachel Maddow. We feed those stories to the birdcage. That was in John Brennan's own words. That's who the CIA is. Why is that so hard to understand? Why is it so, why, why has Rachel Maddow, why does she have such a hard time grasping the idea of a, of a, a deeply corrupted deep state? No, don't tell the public. And so we held the election with the leadership in Congress knowing full well what Russia was doing. And we all went to vote while they sat on that. Until now, until the Post published this tonight. So she's leaning 100%, 100% on the Washington Post. There's other stuff towards the end over here, too. That, um... Last hour, a uh, concern of what happened in the 18th. Flynn was vulnerable. America, Watch this you. is what your life has been like since December. Do you wonder why you've been a little stressed out over the past few months? Have you been following this news? <laughs> Uh, it, has, it has been a long but gratifying seven months for journalism, particularly the nonstop, it feels like nonstop breaking news from our excellent national treasure, world-class American newspapers like the Washington Post and like the New York Times. Stop right there. National treasure, world-class American newspapers like the Washington Post and the New York Times, who they have now all, all have been debunked as propaganda tools right, of the deep state, right? So, so that's so. What I'm trying to say, what, what I'm what I'm trying to say, is a couple more things I want to say. But but that to to wholly hold Rachel Maddow guilty of of doing it for her own gain is not necessarily true. That's the point I was trying to make. Is that she's doing it because she's the bird in the cage and she's being directed to do it. That's the big point of the whole thing. All right, so does this so let's just talk about one one other thing. Is this harassment and bullying? So 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 my my thumbnail, right? Content that is deliberately posted in order to humiliate someone. Content that makes hurtful and negative personal comments, videos about another person. 
Content that incites others to harass or threaten individuals on or off YouTube. Now, I've been banned. I got banned for a week for allegedly for just talking about a subject in that country next to Australia where someone did something with one of these, right? And and you're not even allowed to 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 allude to any of that stuff other than to say, wow, such a horrible thing happened over there, right? Now, is that is that to to look at the situation and look at the evidence that was was available is is uh, considered all of these things um, is humiliating someone is deliberately attacking people is harassment and cyberbullying. But really, isn't what Rachel Maddow just did? Isn't the evidence that we just saw exactly that? But you can go to these videos right now. Go to this one, and you know there it is. It's monetized. There's there's two hundred thousand views. It's up and running. Everything is fine. Right, but someone who who speaks a a a real truth about a real incident with real evidence on the table—that's cyberbullying and that's cyber cyber harassment—and those people get kicked offline. Right, and again, I'm not gonna I'm not doing this just because I got kicked off. It's just because you can see the um, the extent you could see the extent of how a person like Rachel Maddow is is weaving this web. Right, so. So there you go. So what is, um, there's also, how about this? Why not, the other problem is this. Why, for, for two and a half years, the left media, Rachel Maddow, has been spinning a narrative. What about this stuff? Bernie Sanders puts this out the other day. Now, I know it's not a defense of Bernie Sanders. It's just the, it's just the ideas, the issues. On nearly every, quote, radical idea, the American people are with us. On every radical idea, the American people are with us. Statistics, as of uh, January 15th, 2019, 72% want an expansion of Social Security. 70% want Medicare for all. 70%. 65% want a jobs guarantee. 64, legalized marijuana. 60% want tuition-free college at city and state universities. 58% want a minimum wage of $15. And 57% want to break up banks. Now, can you imagine if Rachel Maddow would have spent the last two years focused on the real issues of the American people, which is this, right? Nobody gains from from the Russia bullshit. Nobody gains anything. In fact, you're putting two superpowers at odds, creating a Cold War, which, uh, of course, benefits the the military industrial complex, but it, it costs you money and tax money and may just get us blown up. Right? But instead, that's where Rachel Maddow, the Rhodes Scholar, the brilliant minds, the brilliant minds of our mainstream media, the brilliant minds in bird cages promote false narratives a, 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 against what the people actually want, which is the things that I just talked about, Social Security, eleva- you know, ask more so that people are comfortable in their old age. Medicare for all, college tuition, city and state universities, break up the banks, break up big tech too. All right, so that's that's what I was trying to say today. I know I went on a little bit, but the Rachel Maddow uh, debacle is, is an interesting study because she's not completely to blame. Uh, f- she is completely to blame for her own behavior, but she's also, she, you could see where it comes from that what Rachel Maddow should do is now look into the camera and say, the CIA, the NSA, the National Security Advisors lied to us. They fed us fake news. They fed us fake information. And, and in the final analysis, it makes us look bad, not, the, not the, uh, the agencies that fed us the information. They're the fall guy. You know? Rachel Maddow, take the fall. Right? Fall on that sword, Rachel. Fall on it now and say, look into the camera and say, I follow, I did what I was supposed to do. Right? I'm a Rhodes Scholar. Right? And 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 they lied to me. They lied to me. Marcus Conti reporting.